Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this Blender animation in physics tutorial. And today we are going to see how to create this fluffy ball bouncing around. And we also go in depth about hair and fur. For the bouncing part I used soft bodies with rigid bodies and we also see a little bit about it. So the first thing we want to do is set Blender to render with cycles. Select GPU here. If you don't know if your graphic card is supported, you can go to File, User Preference, and in System, you will or will not see CUDA. Now let's quickly create a backdrop and we can add a plane from the Shift A menu, scale it up with S like this, and enter in Edit mode so we can select these edges and extrude with E. Now with Ctrl R, we want to add 4 horizontal cuts, like this. And after you have done so, you can go back to object mode with tab and in the modifiers we want to add a subsurface modifier. And we can set the view to 2 or 3. Now just select the smooth option in this left panel so it looks smoother when rendering. Let's move on to our fluffy ball and with Shift A we can add the sphere and set the segments and the rows to 32. Let's also add a subdivision surface modifier because the air will work better with more geometry. And we can press smooth again in the left panel. Now moving on to probably the most important thing which is the air, we are going to do it with the particle system right here. And for the type we can select air and now in the emission we can control the number of the particles which in this case it's the amount of air and the hair length. So the length is going to be something like 0.4 and the number of emission is going to be 4000. And that's quite a lot, you can set a lower value by the way because this also increases the render time and we are going to add more air with the children. To make your navigation in the viewport lighter, you can go to display and decrease this value. This will only affect the viewport, showing us the percentage we want. The next thing, which is very important to create great fur, is the children, like I said. And the children basically adds more hair to the main strands that we already had. We set the children to simple and the display affects the amount of children we see in the viewport, but the render controls the amount of children that will be rendered. Now this may seem messy and confusing at first, but I'm gonna walk you through. I usually start playing with this endpoint value, which controls the size of the roughness of the children, as you can see. It also controls the length. Now I'm going to reduce the display to one person so you can see what the clamp and the shape does. And the clamp basically controls if the end point of the children gets together. And the shape controls if the children start getting together at the bottom or only at the top, as you can see. The next thing is the uniformness of the roughness parameter. I'm gonna leave it like this and move on to the random parameter which I like a lot because it creates this natural randomness between the parameters we have seen. Now, if you push the display to 100% and press Shift Z, you can see that it starts to look very fluffy actually. But uh, let's go back to see what the other parameters do. And the radius, which I didn't use, is great to create some crazy effects because these allow us to expand the hair strands around the radius as you can see. Now, another important parameter to create fluffy stuff is the kirk and for this I choose a curl because I want some curly air and uh, here the amplitude and the frequency work together if both are set to zero nothing will happen and we enter small values in these parameters because uh, the frequency works like a wave and the wave can be amplified with this value and finally the shape works in the same way as the shape of the clamp now we are pretty much done with our hair. The final parameters allow us to control the thickness of the hair. If you go down here, you can see it's too thick and we're gonna reduce the scale to 0.01 
and the root, which controls the size of the base of every air, to 0 0.2. Okay, I guess that's it for our overview of the hair particles. You can copy my values if you want or you can play around with them, see what fits best your needs. I already like the end result. And I'm gonna move to the materials. And we are going to create two materials, one colored base for our sphere and the other one colored hair. Now let's go to node editor down here. The base material is nothing really special, it's just a diffuse shader. And the hair on the other end has a few more things. So let's press here in the color and select color ramp like this. And in the factor we have a special section for the hair that you may need to scroll up to see it and we want to choose intercept. And the great thing about it is that in the color ramp the left part, the dark key, controls the color of the root and the white key is the end of our hair strand which means the left part is going to have the same color as the base material so we don't see the surface of the sphere. You can also add more keys by pressing the plus sign and play with other colors. Now to assign the material to the hair we can go to the particle system and down here where it says render we can select the hair material we have just created and that's how you apply material to the hair. I actually ended up playing a little bit with it and added the emissive material for the sphere just for fun and I kinda liked this effect but after a while I came back to the diffused color. Now let me just show you a quick thing with vertex groups. If we come here to this separator and add a new vertex group, rename it to something, we can hide the air particles in the high by the way. And now if we press Control tab to enter in white paint, you can paint whatever you want. I'm gonna rapidly paint something. Because now if we go to the particle system, down here in the vertex groups we can see that we have several parameters and we can add weight paints to these parameters. The kirk I don't really see any difference and the clump I don't see it as well. But in the land we can see that where is painted the hair is bigger. I'm gonna paint a bit more just to be noticeable like this. And now for the density, the density is really great because it lets you do stuff like this. And it will allow you to control where the hair is. This is usually used for the creation of facial hair. Okay, now that's it for the fluffy ball and we want to make it bounce and make the hair interact with the collision. And for that we have to make a few more adjustments. And the first thing we want to do is go to the physics tab, which is the last one and select the backdrop and add a collision like this. Now with the ball selected we can add a soft body, turn off the soft body goal for now and in the soft body edges I'm gonna set the pull and the push to 0.9 and the bedding to 8. Also increase a little bit the dump and by the way, you can find out more about soft bodies in this video that I made where I recreated a game of Tetris with soft bodies. And the result is really great, you can check it out, I'll have the link in the description for those who are curious to see. Now back to our fluffy ball. If we press Alt A, everything is working fine as you can see. But some people may have this problem, where the ball falls, but the hair doesn't fall along. And to fix this, you just need to make sure the particle system is the last one in the modifiers. Ok, this is fine, but the hair doesn't really react too much to the collisions and the ball doesn't bounce around, like we have seen in the beginning. So let's add a rigid body. And this is where things go crazy, by the way. It has to be active, the rigid body. And if you press Shift A to play, you can see that the center of the object keeps falling down. Now let's just add the hair particles so we can work a little bit better. 
and don't worry about the other sphere, I was just testing something. Now the center of the sphere will keep falling because we have to select the plane and we also need to add a rigid body, but this time we are going to set it to passive and set the collision to mesh back to the sphere. We want to increase the bounciness to around 0.8 also and change the shape of the rigid body collision to mesh and set the source to final. At the moment I didn't change it, but I will change it later. Now if we press play, we can see that the soft body reacts, but the center of the sphere actually starts jumping, which means the rigid body is working, but it is not affecting the object. And this happens because soft body has its own physics. But if we activate the soft body goal, Blender allows the soft body object to be animated and interact with other physics, which means it's going to interact with the rigid body. And my default value of the goal strength was 0 0.5. And by the way, if it's 0, the sphere will only be affected by the soft body. And if it's 1, the ball will only be affected by the rigid body. You will have to play around to find the right balance between the rigid body and the soft body. And my final values were 0.5 for the goal strength, for the pull and the push was 0.95 and 9 for the bending. Now, after playing around with some values, I also found out that the mass was a very important factor to have a nice bounce. And I increased the mass of the soft body and rigid body to 2 and also decreased the friction to 0.2. This is a matter of playing around with the values and see what is best for you. Now I increased the cache time to 300 since I wanted to simulate 10 seconds at 30 frames per second. And after the soft body and rigid body are looking good for you, we want to go back to the particle system and now we want to check hair dynamics. And here I also increased the cache frames to 300. Now the most important parameter is the stiffness, which if we increase we get a lot of artifacts. And if we set it to zero, the particles react a lot to the movement object and even go inside, as you can see. And I found out that 3 or 4 was a good value so we don't have artifacts and the hair doesn't go too much inside the geometry. And I also put a random number of 1. And that's basically it for the hair dynamics. Now before setting everything to render, don't forget to come here. And in the rigid body cache you will also have to increase the end to 300 or to the number of frames you want to simulate. And before rendering everything, I also go back to the hair particles, set the children to around 30 or 40. And then after I think everything is looking good and fine, I go to the soft bodies and press bake all dynamics. And this is going to cache the rigid body, the soft body and the hair dynamics. And after doing so, I rendered everything with only 60 samples since I had 4000 instance with 40 children and it was taking too long to render with more samples. But the end result was pretty awesome and that's basically it guys. Feel free to ask any questions and doubts you may have. I hope you have enjoyed it, I like the end result and subscribe for weekly Blender and game development tutorials. Support me on my Patreon if you can and see you in the next tutorials.